to the Dharma I go for refuge, to the Sangha I go for refuge, to the Guru I go for refuge, to the Buddha I go for refuge, to the Dharma I go for refuge, to the Sangha I go for refuge. Teacher, for destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, has men nor ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, for destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, for destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world's health, men of honor beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, for destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, for destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, health men of honor beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, for destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you chief of men were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who by wife said that time, I pay homage. Completely pure body, supreme fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blesses in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I pay homage. Endowed with a supreme mask, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free of dust, Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I pay homage. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, full of ocean like merits and good qualities, to the dusk one I pay homage. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, released from the evil gone limbs, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the dharma that brings I pay homage. From freedom, teaching the path, where abiding in the pure trainings, holy field, endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I pay homage. Do not commit any non virtuous actions, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamb, illusion, drop of dews, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merits, having attained the state of all things and thereby subduing the enemy of false, may I liberate my greatest from the ocean of existence, stirred by the wages of aging, sickness, and death. I pray to the chief of the Shakyas, whose body was formed by ten million perfect virtues, whose speech fulfilled the hopes of limitless beings, whose mind sees precisely all objects of knowledge. เตยตาอมนิมนิมหามนิยะโสหะเตยตาอมนิมนิมหามนิยะโสหะเตยตาอมนิมนิมหามนิยะโสหะเตยตาอมนิมนิมหามนิยะโสหะเตยตาอมน
Last week uh, we discussed about the, you know, uh, the difference between you know calm abiding or you know calm abiding and special superior insight. Right. So um, now we discuss about the, you know, um, with. Yeah, you know, uh, no. last week we talked about the, uh, the entity and the nature of karma abiding and the, and the nature of the special insight or superior insight, right? Now we make, uh, so today, yeah, we continue with, uh, you know, the, what makes distinguish between come abiding from special insight, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I will read, right? So one of the uh, one of the unique feature of you know having a small class is that you have more time to raise the question, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right? In the crowdy, you know, some big masters coming and then crowdy, no time to raise you know question. So this you can, you know, one of the great, best opportunity to gain, yeah, okay, yeah, from the lesson. Right. <coughs> uh, so through racing caution, we you know learn more we learn more right now i will read <coughs> the the assertion by some that the mind abiding non-conceptuality without an intense clarity factor is come abiding right Whereas that with an intense clarity factor is special insight. So there are some people, you know, who, you know, who make the distinction between the calm abiding and special insight. They say, uh, you know, meditative stabilization with intense clarity is calm abiding. Without intense clarity is special insight. So, so Lama Tsongkhapa says this is inappropriate because it contradicts everything explained earlier. Right, and because this distinction is merely a distinction between a meditative stabilization with laxity and without laxity, right? So that means, uh, so when we do the you know some kind of you know meditative stabilization, right? Meditative stabilization, we have two uh, kinds of you know obstacles, obscuration. One is mental thinking, or what is called as man, mental laxity, mental thinking, uh, almost like you know when we are about to you know engage in meditation on special in you know, yeah, come abiding, the object not clear, and then also there is no stability, you know, like this, almost you know, no wish to engage in meditation, you know, you almost like very heavy body. Uh, but we, we need to make distinction between laxity and lethargy. Laxity can be uh, laxity can be neutral, neut uh, neutral or virtuous, and then lethargy means is completely you know non-virtuous. Lethargy means uh, almost like sluggishness. You know the mind not very clear. You know about to sl sleep. You know like this, falling asleep. <clears throat> right. Mm. So then, yeah, where we can talk about the two laxity or mental thinking. One is you know uh, gross, and one is subtle. 
one is gross and one is subtle. So now, when we do calm abiding meditation, like, you know, so first, uh, when the, you know, object, you know, object or, for example, you meditate on the Buddha statue, when we meditate on the Buddha statue, so the, there is stability. You can, you know, fix your mind on the Buddha statue quite single-pointedly, but the image is not clear. That is man, gross laxity mental thinking. Gross mental thinking. On the other hand, there is subtle mental thinking. That is, now you have both stability. You have stability as well as the clarity of the object, Buddha statue, clarity. But the strength of the clarity is not, you know, no. but there is no strength of clarity. Strength of clarity. So that is, there is stability and the clarity, but no strength of clarity. That is what is, yeah, gross laxity or gross mental thinking. <coughs> right. <coughs> so, there, yeah, it says, um, everything explained because this is distinction is mainly distinction between meditative stabilization with laxity and without laxity. Right. So, this is also because to be sure, Every meditative stabilization of karma abiding also needs to be purified of laxity. That is, you know, referring to the. Um, that is referring to the, you know, uh, karma abiding also needs to be purified of laxity. Means both gross laxity and uh, subtle laxity. And in every meditative stabilization that is free from laxity, the clarity factor of mind will ar definitely arise. That means now, in in every meditative stabilization that is free from gross laxity. Here it says gross, gross laxity that refers to the gross mental thinking, gross mental thinking. The clarity factor of the mind will definitely arise, right? Because um, in the, we already discussed the in the you know um, gross laxity, there is stability but no clarity of the object. There is stability, but no clarity of the object. So long as they you know, uh, free from the gross laxity, the clarity factor of the mind will are definitely arise. Very clear. <laughs> right. <coughs> <coughs> so like this. Mm. Uh, in the meditation, come about in meditation, there are two main obstacles two main obstacles. Uh, one is, you know, uh, this one, we all discuss. One is laxity, mental thinking, you know, mental thinking. Another one is excitement. We called uh, uh, mental excitement, right, mental excitement. And then, you know, excitement, I mean, almost like distraction, you know, distraction. Again, you know, they are, you know, just as there are two mental thinking, there are also two different kinds of, you know, uh, mental excitement. Mental excitement. So, in order to achieve this, you know, come abiding meditation, you know, in order to achieve come abiding meditation, one needs to be free from both, you know, laxity and, uh, yeah, mental excitement. Mental excitement. Uh, we can, you know, we can, you know, we can recognize, we can identify the, you know, uh, we can identify the, you know, uh, gross laxity, but it is difficult to identify the uh, subtle laxity. Because, you know, when there is subtle laxity, you know, you think there is certain uh, degree of, you know, uh, because there is certain degree of clarity and stability you think this is a very profound meditation and then you confuse with this and keep on meditating on this actually what it you know what you are doing is you are you know you know uh, because it's a laxity you know then you are attracted by this kind of you know uh, clarity and stability that finally it you know it will you become almost you know the danger of becoming dumb person dumb person and in the worst case you can take a report in the lower limb <laughs> yeah 
so that you know we that's why we need to differentiate you know clearly in order in order to differentiate we need to understand that you know what is explained right otherwise you know there is one you know uh, there's, uh, there's one saying in tibetan we say uh, you know um, without much hearing without much hearing about dharma it is like you know climbing handicap you know climbing on the mountain trying to climb on the mountain you know like this so like this <clears throat> that is free from lack the clarity factor of the mind will definitely arise so then you need to make the difference between the you know realization of the emptiness now realization of emptiness and blissful lucid non conceptuality blissful the realization of the emptiness and the blissful lucid non conceptuality you need one need to make the, you know difference between two. again there is a danger of getting mixed with these two thus it is necessary to identify whether or not a mind is a meditative stabilization that observes emptiness a wisdom consciousness on the basis of whether or not that mind realizes either of the two selflessness the selflessness of the person and the selflessness of the phenomena right because there are countless non conceptual meditative stabilization of bliss and clarity in which the mind is not directed at the suchness of an object since direct perception establish is that the mind can be held like that in a non conceptual state even though the waving the view realizing the mode of being has not been found there is not even the slightest contradiction in the arising of non conceptual meditative stabilization that do not understand emptiness from that point of view if the mind is held for a long time through the power of the mind being held a vocability of vital energies will arise so uh, through the power of the the mind being held you know then uh, the mind is the mind will be able to help for a long time and through that the vital energies you know the the wind in our body becomes vocable which then give rise to the uh, you know physical bliss bodily bliss since it is natural for joyful bliss to arise in the body and the mind when that has when that has arisen it is not contradictory for the bliss to arise once that has arisen through the power once vivid sensation of joyful bliss the factor of clarity arises therefore it cannot be posited that all blissful clear non conceptual meditative stabilization realize suchness or emptiness consequently since bliss clarity and non conceptual arise in meditative stabilization they realize emptiness and since there are also many meditative stabilizations in which the mind is not directed at emptiness yet bliss clarity and non conceptual still occur it is necessary to distinguish between the two right now yeah let me explain this right now you know our mind is gross you know for example we try to do some kind of meditation you know the mind uh, during our waking state in everyday life the mind during waking state is always gross you know gross state of mind when we go through the sleep mind becomes more subtle when we faint you know you know uh, go into coma becomes more subtle then finally when we go through the, when we die becomes the more subtlest mind so <clears throat> it the gross mind you know it is uh, you know you need a tra- lot of training to you know to you need a lot of training to focus on the object but then when the mind becomes more subtle it easily gets mixed with the object it easily one this is one of the unique you know uh, feature of the subtlety of the mind with the subtle mind it easily mixed with the object like you know placing water on the water if you place water on the water you cannot differentiate right so right now you know for example we try to meditate on something you know put a statue you need lot of effort you know <laughs> sometimes you forget the you know image sometimes you feel sleepy sometimes do not want to do meditation so there are a lot of obstacles lot of obstacles that you know uh, that uh, that interferes mind 
from absorbing into the object, you know, absorbing into the object, right? So as one minds get very subtle, then it easily mixed. Those subtle mind, you know, um, observing the object, very powerful, becomes very powerful, right? Like this. <coughs> now uh, it says non conceptuality still occur. Now, first, you know, for example, come abiding meditation, come abiding stabilization meditation. This state of mind is non conceptual. Now, what makes the difference between the non conceptual and the conceptual? Right? So it becomes very important to understand, you know. Uh, all our eye consciousness, you know, now my eye consciousness, you know, I see all of you. What I see is my eye consciousness and here I hear some music inside my ear, right? So this, what I hear is actually the eye con ear consciousness, you know. So all the sensory perceptions, right, sensory perception. Now I see some movie, you know, for example, I see some magic show. And then I get, you know, magic show, and I'm completely impressed by the magic show. So all these, uh, you know, uh, sensory perceptions are non-conceptual, -conce non non-conceptual, non-conceptual. Because, you know, why non-conceptual is, I can see you directly with my eye, right? Now, now on the other hand, you know, I give this book to you. I give this book to you. Uh, can you please, uh, you know, can you please bring this book to me? We have, uh, you know, few books, you know, over there. Can you please bring it to me? And then you have some image here, and then you are going there to collect that book with this image book. So this thought is conceptual thought <laughs> because the, you don't have, you know, the, the you know, the real book with the image on this, your hat, <laughs> then you go to collect. <laughs> Sometimes you bring the mistake book <laughs> to you. <laughs> right? So this is all the conceptual thought, you know, what we call as discursive thoughts. Discursive thoughts. So, for example, when we... <clears throat> a different, uh, different thinking come, you know, different thoughts coming. So these, all these different thoughts are what we call as discursive thoughts, the main, you know, obstacle for meditation, like this. Again, you know, again, one very uh, beautiful example is, you know, the, between the conceptual thought and non-conceptual, it may help, it may really help, you know, in one's daily life. For example, we are sleeping, yeah, we are sleeping and we are dreaming. For example, yes, when you have very thick sleep, there can be no dream. You cannot dream at all when you are going through very deep sleep. Only when you are dreaming, when you are not in deep sleep, right? When you are not in deep sleep, then you are sleeping and then, you know, some dreaming coming. You are dreaming, right? In the, in the light sleep, in the light sleep, you are dreaming. So, while you are dreaming, you have both the uh, conceptual thought as well as non-conceptual thought. If, if you have non-conceptual thought, the dreaming is very vivid, vivid dream, very clear dream. If you have, you know, conceptual thoughts, the dream is vague, the dream is not clear, you are not dreaming clearly, you know, because you cannot recollect the dream when you wake up, right? Now, for example, you know, Someone is dreaming, someone is dreaming, and then in the dream with nightmare. Ah, this, you know, animals, wild animals eating, <laughs> and then you, <laughs> your head chopped off, <laughs> you, you are being killed, and then you wake up, you know, you are sweating. <laughs> oh, you, sometimes you shout in the dream. <laughs> All this happened, why? <laughs> so, 
this dreaming, you know, the dreaming mind is non-conceptual thought. The things, you know, uh, appear very clearly. You know, the dreaming image clearly appears very clearly. And then, when you have nightmare, when you wake up, you feel very unhappy, right? Oh, I, yesterday I dreamed this and that, you know. You feel a little bit uncomfortable. Because, <coughs> because, <coughs> in the dream, in the dream, when you are dreaming, all your perception, the dreaming mind, or your dreaming mind is, there is no dreaming mind which is valid, always mistaken or distorted, distorted view, distorted, you know, kind of, you know, consciousness, mental consciousness. Why mental consciousness? Because, you know, now, for example, uh, say dreaming zombie you are not dream zombie dream zombie you believe dream zombie is a real zombie <laughs> because of this you get frightened when you wake up <laughs> because and then you, you 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 know you recollect oh dream zombie is a real zombie <laughs> then you get you know, <laughs> uncomfortable feeling right like this if you now because of this you know there is a one you know the practice you know there are practices in which we you know are able to you know understand dream you know the, you know the dreaming object as a, uh, not a real object dreaming object is a dream object not the real object right it's not a <coughs> real object for example, you know, if you uh, you are uh, sleeping, you are sleeping, and then you are you have elephant, very very big elephant. You are you know a very say uh, huge mountain. If the you know if the you know dream mountain, if the dream mountain is really a you know big mountain. Then you can sleep in a very small cabin, very small house, you know, enough to feed yourself. But then huge mountain cannot fit in the small room. <laughs> this shows dream object is not the real object. Another thing is now you use the same logic. In the mirror, in the mirror, you face in the mirror, your image is reflected in the mirror. The image in the mirror is not you. Right, it's just a reflection. It's just a reflection. If it is the case that the the image in the mirror is you know real, then image 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 in the you know reflection in the mirror. We cannot eat, you know, like some food in the mirror. We cannot eat. So like this, we use the same kind of yeah, logic. <coughs> So, yeah, um, like people, you know, uh, talk, uh, people talk about the dream, right? So, uh, they, they uh, yeah, talk about the dream, and then some they, you know, uh, uh, some they place the, uh, you know, significant and the importance of the dream, importance of the dream. But in the uh, Buddhist teaching as a whole, uh, you know, one of the best examples for one of the best examples that things, you know, the things are not real, we can prove through the dream. Because dream is not the real, so the things are not real. So like this. But then, in the uh, dreaming state, you can, you know, uh, we can divide the whole night into the three parts. Three parts. So, uh, you, you know, um, you sleep, for example, that um, in the sleep at eight, or eight, 8 o'clock and then you can have dream at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, right? These, these kind of dreams are not reliable. And then you can have the dream at the midnight, say 12 o'clock. You know? So the dream at the, for example, you sleep at 8 o'clock, you can have dream at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. We say this is, you know, what we do in the daytime, you know, 
uh, some kind of you know habituate and then you can have dream in the middle of the night so this dream is not reliable and then you can have dream at the uh, dawn so uh, according to one master the dream at the dawn is quite reliable yeah quite reliable and then according to the now according to the tibet medicine for example you can have some dream which indicates that you are going to have this disease that again you know this uh, tibet medicine according to tibet medicine so like this so dreaming at the dawn time you know uh, dawn time oh yeah actually not uh, that 100% reliable but you know there is some element of truth mm, yeah you can rely on the dream at the dawn time like this <coughs> Then, uh, yeah, uh, then we can understand, you know, in the, when you are sleeping, you know. But then, due to some very, uh, then due to very, you know, maybe some very karma, you know, karma also plays a role. For example, in, you know, uh, some people can, you know, uh, can dream of in you know, the town burning, town burning. When, he, when the person wake up, the town really burning. Maybe some karmic connection. It possible like this. So there are yeah, many interesting yeah, things like this. Yeah. So do Buddhas dream? Huh. If you know people far along the path or a Buddha, will they still have dreams? Um, who? A Buddha. Buddha. Yeah. <clears throat> but then, yeah, they, uh, you know, their dream is not, you know, under the control of the, uh, you know, other factors. They create their own dream. They create their own dream. Not because, because we have, we have dream, right? We dream because of other factors. In the case of the Buddha, Buddha can have dream, you know, but through his own creation. So that is the yeah, d- yeah, difference. And... Uh, and then though if you reach a highly advanced you know uh, realization then you can have all the perfections of the you can really have the perfect dreams yeah many you know uh, perfect dreams <clears throat> uh, that again there you know there is some involves some practice you know practice <coughs> for example uh, to give a yeah, small example, um, when the great you know uh, this um, this the great uh, Tibetan translator Marpa, when he was you know the the day when the you know his uh, most beloved you know student Milarepa was about to come, he had a dream. What he dream is you know uh, there's one stupa you know, one stupa in his stupa, that stupa has small stain, you know. So, you know, Naroba appeared in his dream, you need to remove that, you know, remove that stain and dirt from the stupa, and then the, you know, light shines forth. Light shines forth. So, similar heaven, <laughs> in real life, heaven, like this. <coughs> and also his, you know, a wife, also the same dream. The same dream. Also, if you go through the you know the life of the Lama Tsongkhapa, before Lama Tsongkhapa, you know the in the mother's womb, the mother has a very you know dream, very you know auspicious dream, as well as his father has a dream, very auspicious dream that somebody who can bring a benefit on this world will you know arrive. So the both father and mother had a dream. So those you know those holy beings, enlightened beings, you know. They can have, you know, auspicious dream, like this. <clears throat> and then uh, also, you know, you know, those who have, you know, uh, gain a high degree of realization, what they in in the dream, you know, they. But uh, this, uh, you know, not only, you know, uh, not only for the spiritual practitioner, it also happened to the lay person. For example, there's one lady, you know, one lady, she was sleeping. 
she asked her you know family members not to touch her body you know for seven one week one week so she was sleeping and then you know uh, with her you know subtle body she go here and there go in here and there in different places while she was sleeping and then after one week you know her subtle body dissolved back into the real body so family members then went there to check and then they are you know dust you know how to say bushes on her you know area sleeping area so like this so it happens yeah mm. huh? you know so they you know the bushes you know they before you know when we were sleeping yeah no bushes found bushes you know the bush you know yeah dry you know bushes so after one week her you know she her subtle body dissolved back into the old body and then you know some bushes because maybe her subtle body you know going here and there maybe you know stuck the bushes here so you know she brought it here to her own sleeping place not her actual body. No, the um, actual body has plant material on it. Yeah, actual body, yeah. The real body, yeah. <laughs> Start some, you know, yeah, like this. And also, you know, very interestingly, yeah. Uh, for example, uh, uh, <coughs> the great Tibetan master, you know, who wrote a wonderful text, you know, on Vinaya teaching. Vinaya teaching. We say, uh, when he first wrote the Vinaya teaching that we study, we still study in Saikya, Kayu, Nyingma, Yeluk, all the four traditions we study for two years, his text, you know. So when he first wrote this Vinaya text on Buddha's, you know, the rules, you know, the monastic rule and the vow, first book stolen by God, <laughs> he has to write the second book. So this wonderful master, when he was sleeping, he receiving the teaching. With his subtle body, he received the teaching. For example, he, when he epistemology he received from Dignak, uh, you know, um, Madhyamika he received from Chandra, you know, Nagarjuna, from Vasubandhu. So, like in the dream, you can, you know, you can assume the subtle body and then go to the Buddha's pure land and listen to the teachings, and then come back and then wake up. <laughs> this. <laughs> <clears throat> so this yeah so very strange things can happen Chanya, uh, one Mongolian sc scholar, he is blind. He is a blind. And then what happened is, he Buddhist text, you know, text, loose page. He over there <laughs> on different places. <laughs> he scattered on different places. And then with his dream body, again, he is reading the text, all his text. But then he was also able to, you know, uh, uh, arranged in an order way, although he's a blind, order way. But all this doing through the dream, you know, body, like this. So, <laughs> all this, what, yeah, this much. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, interesting, many, many things. <clears throat> so, like, a difference between the conceptual and non-conceptual, right? We need, yeah important to understand. Also, you know, if you really, uh, you know, able to, you know, to do this, and then, you know, the, especially, you know, when we are dream, uh, you know, dreaming, you know, some, sometimes, you know, not a good, you know, uh, the, the good dream, and then you can real, uh, you can understand, because we are, we are grasping 
we are clinging the dream, uh, the dream, dream image as a real image because of this you know when we wake up you know when we wake up immediately either you have you know comfortable feeling right or uncomfortable feeling so we can or dream object is not the real object then it gives you a sense of you know uh, uh, sense of uh, yeah, ease or there is no need to worry you know otherwise you know so strong in the dream time the the grasping is so strong even wake up this in some your traces there and you feel unhappy <laughs> like this it, so is it the same then that the way we're grasping at the image in our dream mm. is that what we're doing when we're waking up are we grasping at things in oh. the same way that we're grasping to our dream object that's right that's right that's right. <coughs> uh, yeah, so this, yeah, that's why they give the very, you know, uh, both, you know, uh, you know, in all the schools, you know, on all the school, the best example is they give the dream, you know, because uh, just as in the dream, what we do, you know, similarly, in, in our waking, in our waking uh, state, for example, uh, this phone, you know, I, in our waking state, this phone is not absolute. It is nearly, you know, divine origination. But then in our waking state, we believe this as this, uh, this, uh, you know, phone as enjoying some kind of independent existence, right? So this kind of independent existence now, you know, induce the craving. Craving give rise to the uh, afflictions, affliction give rise to the suffering, finally. So this is how, you know, <laughs> it works, you know, Buddhist emotions work like this. So, no, for everything, everything, yeah. So like that. Yeah, between the, so we know, you know, uh, uh, non-conceptual you know non-conceptual perceptions you know we see the objects directly nakedly you know but then non-conceptual uh, uh, conceptual thoughts you know we don't see the objects clearly there's image you know we see the uh, we you know see the image through the medium of the image we see the you know object through the medium of the image right now for example um, on the part of on the part of the you know uh, on the part of the um, on the part of the uh, preparation, there are four kinds of preparation, right? So first, you know, there is the duality. In the part of the you know duality, there's duality. For example, like this, on the part of the heat, on the part of the heat, there's the duality. And then on the and then on the part of the peak, the duality, you know, a little bit, you know closer, you know, duality, closer, and then on the, and the part of the patience, the duality gets closer, and then on the part of, and then on the part of the supreme, you know, object and mind, placing like water on the water, you cannot differentiate, and then on the part of seeing, now there is a direct perception, direct, no con non-conceptual, direct perception, so, there is not a single duality. No. The duality of inherent existence, the duality of the, you know, uh, uh, distance, the duality of the conventional reality, all dissolved. Right? And then, yeah, like this. Then, wisdom directly realizing emptiness. Wisdom directly realizing emptiness. So, this wisdom now, yeah. Yeah, the you know duality. There are three kinds of you know duality. For example, you know right now uh, my mind is very gross, right? For example, uh, this object to my mind appears as something inherent existence, independent existence, absolute. You know, I think oh they're very nice. This one, you know, there's not a defect. You know how come you know oh like this? So you know this appearance of you know inherent you know or something of absolute. So there's absolute, and then there is 
uh, uh, so there, then there is the appearance, you know, uh, the duality of uh, conventional reality. So this phone is, of course, conventional reality. Conventional reality. Then there is the appearance of conventional reality, and then there is the appearance of the, you know, uh, how to say, it? the distance, you know, my mind and this uh, phone. I see some distance. One is here and one is here. They, they so distance. So at the, you know, on the path of the seeing, on the path of seeing, all this you know, duality dissolved. There is no more duality because. The mind, uh, you know, your mind peers into the emptiness. Not a single duality over there. Like, you know, placing mind on a mind in the river way. Placing water on a water <laughs> like this. You cannot difference what is water and what is water like. So there's a complete absorption and dissolution of the duality. Three forms of duality. Right. Understand? Yeah. <clears throat> so like this. So there is this. Then you know when these three duality are dissolved, then your mind becomes very very powerful. Then it really uh, you know uh, serve as an antidote, very strongest antidote for the you know uh, grasping. Yeah, grasping. Now I come to know it. So yeah, we uh, talk about the uh, you know conceptual and non-conceptual like these things. So again, it is very important to understand conceptual and non-conceptual, right? Conceptual and non-conceptual. <coughs> and then we understand. Then we really understand. Uh, uh, um, say. Uh, for example, you know, uh, there is some teachings like uh, exploring one's own nature of the mind, you know. Uh, some, uh, you know, in ancient time, the people will, uh, uh, you know, introduce you, you know, I want, to I want to know who I am. So the masters tell them, go and search where you are. Just go. Then they, you know, try to see who they are, you know, by investigating their mind, you know investing in mind. So who is suffering? Who is, you know, savior? Who is protecting oneself? So they finally come to the mind, you know. Then they come to the mind and then through the, you know, blessing, blessing of the master, then they, you know, some kind of realization come, comes. But then, you know, if we were, if we really were to achieve the enlightenment, or some say, if we really want to achieve the everlasting joy and peace, no more suffering, you know, because no more suffering, everlasting peace. In order to achieve the everlasting peace, in order to achieve the everlasting peace, the real, I mean, when I say everlasting peace, not a temporal peace, something you can trust, a reliable peace, forever. The, no. Ever, Analytical meditation is a must. Analytical meditation is a must. And, the, you know, a thought, conceptual thought is the necessary thing. Conceptual thought is the most necessary thing. You know, you cannot have, right from the beginning, with somebody's blessing, you know, you cannot develop a direct realization of emptiness. No way. It will never occur. Yeah. With uh, some, you know, blessing, and uh, you, uh, you know, like this, uh, come and then, you know, blessing never happen because we we clearly know we clearly know because what what really causes some someone go through suffering what really someone you know go through the problem is because of the you know one's own you know uh, ignorance or confusion state of mind confusion state of mind can be uh, get rid of through wisdom wisdom can be cultivated from within one side, not from somebody. Maybe someone help, really help you, know, inspire you. Somebody can help you, inspire, inspire you to activate this. But ultimately, comes from one side, right? So like this. Now we go to the next. The reason why both come abiding and special insight needs to be cultivated. 
right? Why it is necessary? Now it says, why is it not? Why is it not enough to cultivate either come abiding or special insight? Why it is necessary to cultivate both? So it says, we need to cultivate. It says to illustrate this when you light a butter lamp at night in order to look at the murals, you know, on the murals. If the butter lamp is both very bright and does not flicker due to wind, you will see the painted figures very clearly. However, if the butter lamp is not bright or if even though bright it flickers in the wind, you will not see the forms clearly. Right? So that's very yeah, very true. Now you see <clears throat> So that is, you need both come abiding and special insight, right? Now, for example, uh, if we develop a come abiding, but no special insight or, you know, uh, the realization of emptiness. Now, uh, of course, you know, uh, you know, when we develop come abiding, of course, uh, we can calm down, you know, what makes us suffering what makes us a problem we can calm down those conditions which make us which makes us to suffer which make us to go through the problem calm down you know the conditions come down but then you know because there is no special insight support of special insight the condition is ready to you know activate for example the the, the seed you know dry seed it not grow because there is no you know conditions. If you put some water, <laughs> take care, it will grow. <laughs> Similarly, you know, we although you know temporarily, you know, when we achieve come abiding, temporarily these negative emotions and you know destructive emotions or disturbing emotions, you know, come down to a certain degree, you know. But then if we are not careful, it will <laughs> activate. <laughs> it will activate, right? For example, since beginningless lifetime, I have achieved come abiding limitless time. You also achieve come abiding limitless time. <laughs> but then, you know, <laughs> we, <laughs> because how do we know we achieve come abiding? Is because in order we already we have taken rebirth in the form and formless limitless time. In order to in order to you know take a birth in the form in the form realm, you need to achieve come abiding. Without achieving come abiding, you cannot take rebirth in form and formless realm. So with this, we can prove we have taken a rebirth in formless and form and formless realm, limitless time. In this limitless time, we have achieved the come abiding limitless time. <laughs> but then you know, you know, we have we haven't you know battled. We haven't, you know, uh, battled against the destructive emotions enough, right? <laughs> Not strong. So because of this, you know, we still do have, you know, the traces, you know, like this. So come abiding, special insight, come abiding, both necessary. <coughs> uh, Uh, we know Vabishika, Vabishika school of thought, the lowest school of thought in Buddhism. Uh, Buddha taught the four tenets, four tenets, four schools, Vabishika, Vabishika and Sodrantika, Sodrantika, Vabishika and Sodrantika. So these school, two school of thought, they also, you know, they also have their own presentation of path and ground, path and ground. So, in their own presentation, they have, you know, uh, fire destroyer, fire destroyer, arhat. Arhat means those people who destroy the ignorance, ignorance, you know. So they have some explanation. They have, you know, beings, you know. For example, if you look at the Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Burma, you know, they follow Vavishika school of thought, you know, they follow Vavishika school of thought. 
so they have to some extent destroyed the negative emotions you know they are people you know who destroy negative emotions but then what happened is you know from the high school of thought that is the madhyamika prasangika madhyamika school of thought from their understanding they still have not destroyed the negative emotion so what happened is now they think this you know uh, arhat fire destroyer they think oh i have completely destroyed the negative emotions i have completely destroyed the ignorance now i am happy now they think i have liberated from samsara or in you know, suffering i have liberated what happened is so they think this way so they are you know quite enjoyable but then when the death comes you know because when the death comes because they have not destroyed the root of the neg- confusion and ignorance root of the confusion and ignorance finally the craving comes in their state of mind then they believe oh i have you know i think i have you know uh, destroyed negative emotions how come i develop i develop craving buddha say buddha say that uh, you know if you if you you know destroy negative ignorance i am liberated but now i am not liberated the ignorance is in taking over, over in me so they develop disbelief in buddha this disbelief disbelief caused them to take a rebirth in lower life and this is explained like this so yeah like this again so what i'm what we are trying to tell is you know with calm abiding we can you know pacify we can pacify the uh, you know destructive emotions the unhappiness state of mind temporarily but not lasting because in order to you know destroy the uh, things we need to remove from the root from the seed imprint then you know total liberated for example as a sign um, you know some you know some arhat some arhat when they are going when they are taking a walk all of a sudden they jump like this they jump and then they playing this is the clear indication they have they have not overcome the seed the imprints and then some bodhisattva when they are eating they get distracted <laughs> so this is a clear sign that they have not destroyed the imprints like this <clears throat> so we can move to then more maybe interesting thing. so explaining the meaning you know so we discovered the illustration you know right likewise with respect to weaving the profound meaning if you have both the wisdom and mistakenly ascertaining the meaning of suchness and the in uh, imperturbability of a mind that stays on its object at will you will see suchness clearly however if you do not have the wisdom realizing the ultimate reality despite your non conceptual meditative stabilization in which your mind remains unscattered you will not be able to realize the ultimate reality however much you familiarize yourself with meditative stabilization right so if you uh, de- do not develop calm abiding you know you just have you know uh, you know clarity of the you know you do have special insight you know wisdom realizing emptiness then is a you do not see the ultimate reality clearly so one time he told in the dalai lama say in in dharamsala in school in dharamsala when he was giving teaching he say he is almost you know he can yeah almost he realize emptiness but since uh, he has no time because he travel around the world he has no time so he has not developed come come abiding i have enough excuse you don't yeah have yeah and those people you know students you cannot have enough excuse i have enough excuse because i travel around the world no time to do you know to develop come abiding but of course you know he say i have developed you know special insight which really you know to some extent he see things appear as mere illusion you know 
ये मेरे एल्यूशन लाइक दिस यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू रियलाइज द मोड ऑफ बींग हाउ ए मच हाउ मच यू फेमिलाइज योर सेल्फ विद मेरिटेज स्टेबलाइजिंग ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ यू हैव द व्यू दैट अंडरस्टैंड सेल्फलेसनेस बट लैक द फर्म मेडिटेटिव स्टेबलाइजेशन इन विच द माइंड रिमेन सिंगल पॉइंटेड यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू clearly see the meaning of the ultimate reality therefore both come abiding and special insight are necessary <laughs> so lama sama was final solution is therefore both come abiding and special insight are necessary he say it is not enough you know come abiding you know like uh, come abiding alone your special insight alone even you know those indian sadhus you know indian sadhus and they can develop come abiding they do have you know come abiding meditation and also you know uh come abiding therefore both come abiding and special insight that necessary so although you know when we develop a come abiding there are many you know uh, there are many advantages you know there are many benefits so for example like you can you know your body become very you know light you know as you know as light as the you know the feather birds feather and also you know you uh, you know you can also fly in the sky and you can also pass through the wall like this but then the yeah you come by the yeah because your whole body is changed you know to some extent changed you know and then you can also but the greatest advantage is that you know you remain very calm you know no matter what external situation is you know you still remain quite calm because you have pacified this you know you have pacified those you know distract emotions which makes you know things unpleasant so we you know you know pacified to to some extent so this is the greatest advantage of having cultivated the calm abiding meditation right this one uh in um, in tibet during the cultural revolution there was uh, uh in the mountain in the mountain there is a one old no there is a one old monk he has you know 90 student staying in the mountain right so out of 90 students uh 10 monks so they have to go for begging the food right 10 monks flying from one sky to another sky no another mountain to another mountain because in between there are rivers flowing huge river flowing so they are you know flying in the sky from one mountain to another mountain so this is not a lie you know there's a one old lady during cultural revolution she say she so with this with her own eyes right like this so then you know <laughs> uh one time you know uh there is a you know father one father and what his son you know uh, plucking plucking in the field you know and then the son was you know the sun you know so in the sky you know sun miller was flying miller was flying in the sky <laughs> and then uh the son say to the father father look 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 oh, somebody is flying you know in the sky <laughs> because you know that father you know seem to be the relative of his uncle you know who destroyed the house you know the house so father father look look somebody is flying you know don't see don't see it <laughs> the father say don't see it this uh, guy is the you know the really that the traitor the the, uh, the son of the uh, you know the, you know uh, traitor son of the mother you know yeah the, the son of the you know uh, traitor mother so that let alone you know let alone see him do not fall his shadow on your body <laughs> then yeah say say that that no worry you know it, it you know seeing the man flying is the most spectacular thing no matter what happens i will keep on saying <laughs> so, so yeah he achieved you know come a biting miller but so he was able to fly yeah so the body becomes light 
Yeah, your yeah. body becomes almost like cotton, you know. Yeah, it says, you know, like birth feather, very, very light. Do, yeah. do, do babies who, people who have common do they eat? Uh, yeah, then, you know, they don't, you know, need to maybe not rely on the gross food, you know. Because one of the also, you know, one, after you achieve, achieve the common abiding, even for one month, two months, no physical tiredness. Because of this, you know, we say right now, uh, when we engage in some good activity, you know, both physically and mentally, physically, mentally and verbally, not that powerful. Because there is no stability, no stability and no clarity. Because, of, you know, once you achieve the calm abiding, now everything becomes more constructive, more powerful. Like this. And then they say, you know, when you, you know, achieve in, when you want to do meditation single pointedly, then you can focus on months after months. So this is the unique, you know, of the calm abiding. Right. Yes. Therefore, both come and special insight are necessary. Right. Yeah. So there, there are many, many, you know, uh, this uh, benefits of the having achieved the calm abiding. So yeah, each one, you know, <laughs> I cannot, you know, yeah, describe in detail, detail. In now relating to the scriptural passage, or the text also says, you know, with special insight alone, divorced from calm abiding, the yogi's mind is distracted to other objects, and like a butter lamp in the wind, it will not become stable. When the you know butter lamp is in the you know wind, it come here and you know when the wind come the butter lamp go here. <laughs> when the wind come from other direction, it goes the opposite direction. So similarly, one's mind, you know, if it is distracted, it go distracted the that way, distracted other side, <laughs> go distracted to the other side. Not stable, right? It will not become stable. This being so, the light of wisdom will not shine forth very bright which is why you should rely on both alike. So, see, you need to you know, rely on both alike. You know, uh, in order to, you know, uh, in order to, um, in order to destroy the root of, you know, uh, ignorance, calm abiding alone is not sufficient. Uh, Special insight, wisdom, realism, emptiness, not sufficient. Both is necessary. Both is necessary. Bo yeah, sorry, both are necessary. Both are necessary. Divorce from calm abiding, the yogi's mind is distracted to other objects. And like a butter lamp in the wind, it will not become stable. This being so, the light of wisdom will not shine forth very bright. This is which is why you should rely on both alike. Through the power of calm abiding, the mind will not moved by the winds of conceptualization like a butter lamp placed away from the wind. Through special insight, you abandon the stairs of all the inferior views so that others do not affect you anymore. It is like it has been set forth in the Moonlight Sutra, right? So this. Uh, so, come abiding meditation, right? Come abiding meditation, and then there, there are you know different kinds of meditation, different forms of meditation, right? And then one kind of meditation there is is you know uh, what is called as you know um, non conceptualization, the meditation of no conceptualize. This kind of meditation, you know, you know, flourish in Tibet during the uh, during the eighth century. During the eighth century, there is a one Chinese, you know, uh, 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 Chinese expounder. There is a one Chinese expounder. He visited Tibet. So he visited Tibet and he propagated his, you know, philosophy. The philosophy, you know, the, the practice known as non conceptualization meditation. So then, you know, he propagated this to the extent of even in the, the queens, the sons, all, you know, 
attracted by this kind of meditation, right? So then, you know, uh, the great, you know, Tibetan emperor, you know, King Tsung Dezen. King Tsung Dezen developed a doubt, you know, if this is really a authentic meditation or, you know, comes from Buddha or not. So he invited the, the great Indian, you know, top master, the Nalinda master, top, Nalinda top master, Shanti Rakshita. Shanti Rakshita sent his student Kamaleshala to Tibet to challenge him. Now all the people gathered, you know, on the other side there's a Hashang, you know, his name was Hashang, you know, Hashang, those people who held his view. On the other side there's a master's Kamaleshala, the Indian top you know, scholar Kamaleshala. Kamaleshala emphasis that, you know, Kamaleshala emphasis hearing Reflection, meditation should go one by one order. Right from the beginning, you cannot not conceptualize. You cannot conceptualize. So that they debated heavily. They debated, and then it says, you know, it says Hashan lost the battle. Hashan lost the you know debate, and then you know, he finally it says he ran away. He ran away, and while he ran away, he left his one shoe. <laughs> he, he, the shoe, you know, left. And then Hashem predicted, make predict, predicted, still in the future, there will be some minor who held my view. Like this. And then the king says, from now onwards, in any part of Tibet, if there is anyone who held the, with this kind of non conceptual view, will be punished severely. Like this. So it is from that point of time then the Buddha Dharma, you know, the India flourished directly. Yeah, from uh, India brought to Tibet directly. So like this. And then yeah, in that meditation, what happened is, you know, what they say is, do not think, you know, do not conceptualize anything, whether it be positive emotions, whether it be neg negative emotions, you know, do not conceptualize because. Conceptualize is the root of your problem, all the problem, all the suffering, you know. The moment you think something, it gives rise to another thinking, it gives rise to another endless thinking. This will give you stress, the problem, depression, everything. They say like this. So, they, you know, they say, blank your mind, you know. You stop thinking about the past, stop thinking about the future, whatever emotions you come forcefully you know abandon try to abandon it like this so this kind of meditation on the other hand we can also talk about the meditation Dzogchen meditation Dzogchen, you know. so people think they almost look like similar because in Dzogchen meditation you try to you know also cease your past thinking present thinking uh, uh, remain at the present moment stop the future thinking you know, future thoughts past thoughts remain at the present moment. So when you remain at the present moment, what happens is then the mind, you, it allows you to identify the clarity of the mind, the luminous nature of the mind. Right? You, then you, you know, prolong the duration. You prolong the duration like this. So uh, you see the difference on the, in the Hashan's, you know, in the Hashan's philosophy, it says you forcefully abandon it. In the Dzogchen teaching, you don't forcefully abandon it. Let it go, let it come, let it go. Do not forcefully try to abandon, overcome it. So that is the difference. Let it come naturally and let it go naturally. Try to see the nature of, you know, try to see the, you know, the nature and luminous, you will see the luminous nature. So like this kind of meditation. And then, yeah, you see, divorce from calm abandoned yoga's mind is distracted to other objects, and like a butter lamp, the wind will, uh, it will not become stable. This being so, the light of wisdom will not shine forth very bright, which is why you should rely on it. Through the power of calm abiding, the mind will not be moved by the winds of the conceptualization, like a butter lamp placed away from the wind. 
through special insight you abandon the snares of all inferiors so that others do not affect you anymore it is like it has been set forth in the moon life sutra <coughs> one very you know unique thing is the i believe first you know uh we uh develop a calm abiding any kind of calm abiding meditation for example in solitude you know solitude do some kind of meditation you know i mean long time meditation and then you know because you because you do not hear alone you also implement it you implement it then you come to the troubled society and the troubled world you know you come to the troubled world and see the you know situation if your mind is not stable <laughs> you are impressed by the <laughs> these other you know external things however if your mind is stable you know other factors will never ever affect your stability of your mind <laughs> so i'm surprised by his i mean chunder rimbuche right you see whether it be good situation unpleasant situation pleasant situation he is always same person <laughs> sometimes not happy sometimes not good you no know, like is always you know at the same mood <laughs> this is surprising right <laughs> even you know uh, you know no matter how far we say you know one month are uh, good but then other the month <laughs> so, <laughs> change but he's you know all stable at all the time like mount you know like mount everest all the time um they are driving you know on the road you know so one you know somebody show rupuche a uh, look how beautiful you know after the you know the, the scenery is <laughs> we do like this no <laughs> we do like this <laughs> like this right? we do like <laughs> so there's stability you know he achieve come abiding yeah rupa ji really achieve come abiding because how do we know is the stability this is stability in responding to a all you know situation like this <coughs> and where is yeah there are many many examples you know many many examples you know for example you know somebody you know give a you know some you know mm, mm, huge amount of cash you know to rumbuche uh, rumbuche does not you know respond easily normally he does not respond easily <laughs> like this if you raise one question you will sometimes you have to wait for half an hour one hour <laughs> <laughs> like this <laughs> and then like this <laughs> even if you ask dharma question you know he won't easily answer <laughs> do you like this <laughs> sometimes you have to go without <laughs> getting an answer <laughs> so like this which is a marvelous yeah teacher really marvelous and yeah teacher if you know something you are with then say you know i know this and that thing you know rimbuche <coughs> one of the unique things if you ask for transmission one you know for example in the vajra and the teaching you know it says rimbuche has you know one teaching very secret teaching you know we call uh, goya samaja goya samaja high shogatantra you know uh, experiential practice experiential practice so in geluk tradition this you know lineage was you know there is no goya samaja experience experiential uh, practice lineage his own is one time says now in geluk tradition goya samaja experiential lineage is uh, you know already you know uh, uh, how to say you know, broke the lineage already no more exists but rimbuche has this 
so like this then you know uh, but uh, also strangely he ne he didn't say you know i have this you know uh, kind of uh, the transmission i have that transmission you know even if you ask to give him you know rupaji say <laughs> oh what are you are saying why have you collected so many student <laughs> like this <laughs> he really want simplicity of the life you know uh, you know uh, simplicity the like humbleness and no more you know kind of arrogance involved you know the 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 thing like fame and this thing no more involved in this in this case so like this so now if you were to you know somebody you can see yeah his eminence yeah chinder which achieve come abiding then there are many you know <laughs> if you want to find somebody who achieve come abiding <laughs> go to himalaya regions yeah you will see plenty yeah enough people you know mm uh, yeah yeah where is it uh through come abiding power you will be immovable through special insight you will be like a mountain so immovable mountain <laughs> this one book if i get it immovable mountain <laughs> right so if you investigate with wisdom that is thus conjoined with the meditative equipoise of calm abiding without unevenness due to laxity and excitement of the mind you will know the teaching of reality with that intention it says in the com- compendium of teaching when your mind is in meditative equipoise you know the reality as it is now again this is again very important you know come abiding on special insight right now you see, we see we already know the you know examples right for example if we uh, there is unpleasant situation right a uh, unpleasant situation now in order to solve that any problem you know any problem a uh, unpleasant problem or any problem in order to solve that problem uh in order to solve that problem we need the uh, you know we need to think uh, we need to we need to have the holistic outlook so holistic outlook means you know you are able to see the situation from all the four angle or eight dimension right now this you know uh, it is like you know mm, mm, so able in uh, you know to be able to see the things from the holistic you know outlook is like a special insight right now in order to develop that outlook you need the support of yeah you need the support of mm, you need the support of come abiding come abiding because come abiding means the stability clarity stability right and then the important thing is their calmness in order to see the situation from the all angle you need to develop a mind which you know which can see the things clearly and also with stability so like this not only in our you know practical level but also in day to day's life you know come abiding you know come mind but his holiness the dalai lama normally say uh like you know a holistic outlook and a calm mind so he when he say calm mind calm mind refers to the yeah, kind kindness or yeah compassion like this mm. so uh through come abiding power you will be immovable yeah through special insight you will you will be like a mountain 
If you investigate with wisdom, that is thus joined with meditative equipoise of calm abiding without unevenness to the laxity and excitement of the mind, you will know the meaning of reality with that intention it says in the compendium of the teaching. When your mind is in meditative equipoise, you will know the reality as it is. Because to see the reality, you know the, you need to have the calm mind. When you have the calm mind, then you really know the reality. You know how to deal with the situation from the different angle, not with only one-sided angle. <clears throat> from stages of meditation, yeah. Since the mind is unsteady like water, there is no calm abiding. There is no abiding without the basis of calm abiding. A mind that is not in meditative equipoise cannot know the reality as it is. The Bhagavan also said, reality is fully known as it is by a mind in meditative equipoise. Yeah. So this, you know, we can tell from our own you know, experience, you know. For example, when you think about something, you know, when we think about something, it's very, you know, precise. It's very penetrating. You know, uh, in the Debung Monastery, there's a one, you know, great master. Uh, he already passed away. Yeah. So when we, th when he think about the teaching and some meaning, you know, it almost took him five hours, six hours, like this. Even, you know, when somebody go, he don't notice. <laughs> two immers, you know, two immers. What they are doing here, they, he has no idea who is doing <laughs> So like this, you know. So like in this kind of, yeah, come abiding, yeah, need the same, you know, you know, same. No, yeah, fine. No, then, yeah. How doing something virtuous has great power once come abiding has been accomplished. So it says, now with come abiding, once the come abiding is accomplished, now, uh, you know, the strength of your, you know, virtuous activities, you know, how it can affect the strength of virtuous activities. Now here's, uh, I will read. When you accomplish come abiding, not only does it counter, uh, counteract the fault of your wisdom, wisdom consciousness, wandering off while correctly investigating selflessness. The fall of distraction to other objects stops for all analytical meditations that you do with wisdom of individual analysis on impermanent, now say impermanent, law of cause and effect, law of karma, the disadvantages of cyclic existence, love, compassion, training in the mind of enlightenment, and so forth. So it says, with the distraction mind, with your distraction mind, even if you are trying to, now for example, I try to meditate on you know, impermanent, I try to meditate on the love, it is not forceful, that, although yeah, good, but not that forceful, because it lacks the support of calm abiding meditation. So that's why not forceful. Once you achieve calm abiding, if you then do, you know, love, meditation, love, even if you do some analytical meditation, you know, can be very powerful to the point, penetrating, right, like this. So this, yeah, yeah, from our day-to-day -day experience, we can say, for example, I do some, you know, impermanent, you know, and then while I, you know, uh, try to meditate on impermanent, and sometimes my thoughts are going the other way. <laughs> because no come abiding meditation, not forceful, right? Not, you know, go into the deep, very deep, not forceful. Because there is, again, distraction, distraction comes. Like this. <clears throat> No, for example, you know, let us take an uh, example of compassion, you know. We can develop, you know, compassion for everybody like this, you know. But then, you know, somebody, you know, to whom, you know, you have some <laughs> problem, 
oh my goodness, I can see that. <laughs> what about to do with that person? <laughs> I can direct all my compassion. <laughs> so like this, again, this kind of that distraction come. Compassion training, the mind of enlightenment and so forth. Then since you get involved in each individual object, whatever, whatever it may be, without being distracted to something else, everything virtuous you do is very powerful. Yeah, everything you do is very powerful. As long as you have not obtained karma abiding due to predominant distracting to other objects, any virtuous practice you will you do will be weak. It is as it says in the engaging in the Bodhisattva conduct. A person whose mind is being distracted is in the fangs of mental afflictions. The seer taught that recitation, ascetic practices and so forth, even if engaged in long, are pointless with a distracted mind. <laughs> so if somebody, yeah. So this is, yeah, Tsongkhapa's, Lama Tsongkhapa's, you know, teaching. Hmm. Lamring, Lamring Chemo is quite big, extensive for most, for many people. So he tried to, you know, I think this is the, very important text, you know, he really, you know, work hard. Yeah. Yeah. Now how the order of come abiding in special insight is definite. This has three points. No now you know some they first achieve special insight first and then come abiding next. So it says, you know, you should have order, you know. You should have order. There are some order, you know, go through. No. The first, the actual order, the second explanation of how come abiding, come abiding is a precondition for special insight. Setting out and responding to an objection, right? Now it says the three actual order. Uh, which come first? If you were to give us, you know, um, if we were to give to, you know, uh, you know, uh, to follow, which come first, come abiding or special insight? Right. So it says, having understood. So this is a guide to the Bodhisattva way of life. You know uh, that quotation. Having understood that special insight, conjoined with come abiding, destroy the afflictions. First seek come abiding. So then, yeah, it is very clear. You first, we first do come abiding meditation, right? Thus, you first accomplish come abiding and then cultivate special insight based on it, right? So special insight come after the come abiding, it says. The explanation of how come abiding is a precondition for special insight. So it is a cause, you know, yeah. Main cause. This has three parts: setting out an objection, the response to it. Now, the somebody raised the question here: setting out an objection. If you meditate, observing emptiness from the beginning, from the beginning, since you have reality as the observed object of come abiding, come abiding and special inside will arise simultaneously, so that the two do do not need to be sub, sub, uh, subsequent shell. yeah say the, the somebody say especially inside you know somebody can meditate on you know emptiness you know with calm abiding so in a way you know one uh, achieve both calm abiding and special inside simultaneously so why then need order yeah like this you know question has been raised like this now this is the you know answer answer with regard, with regard to, with regard to that, you may wonder. In stages of meditation, one in stages of meditation, one means Kamalishala, you know. So Kamalishala, he defeated, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, Haishan in debate. So then he wrote that, that how to do meditation. He composed a wonderful you know, text on how to do right meditation. Right, like this. So in stages of meditation one, its object of observation is infinite. River come abiding, come abiding object of observation is in, uh, indefinite. The observed object of come abiding is said to be indefinite. Right? And as explained previously, both phenomena and reality are among the objects of come abiding. When it comes to come abiding, you know, you can take any object, <laughs> you can do any, you know, object on your meter. You can do the animal, you can do the watch, everything. You can, you know, take us in there, yeah, your object of observation, come abiding, right? Are among the object of coming by day. Therefore, it should actually be all right to understand the meaning of selflessness and then simultaneously generate both coming by day, a meditation, observing that understanding due to which the mind does not get distracted, and special insight, observing emptiness. Why first seek coming by day and then cultivate special insight? <laughs> Somebody, you know, we can do now take. The impermanent of this uh, iPhone, the impermanent, the, the the emptiness of this phone. I take this emptiness of this phone as my object of you know come abiding meditation. Now I meditate, right? And then I do this kind of meditation, and I achieve both special insight as well as come abiding, focusing on the emptiness of that. So the opponent is saying. Why you need? Why you need subsequent? Since you can achieve both at the same time, <laughs> right? So the yeah answer goes yeah answer goes. This has three points. The response to it. For an understanding of emptiness and a mere experience of mental transformation to arise, prior come abiding is not necessary. Yeah. For an understanding of emptiness and a mere experience of mental transformation to arise, prior come abiding is not necessary, it says. Yeah. Now this is, a, this is the manner in which come abiding proceeds specially inside. For an understanding of the view realizing selfness to arise, prior come abiding is not necessary because the view is also seen to arise in the absence of come abiding. For an experience of mental transma transformation concerning that view to arise, prior come abiding is not necessary either because even though even without come abiding there is nothing contradictory in the ex in an inexperience of mental transformation arising through familiarization with repeated analysis by means of individual investigation. If it were contradictory, it would absolutely follow from the same reason that the experience of mental transformation arising with respect to impermanence, the fall of cyclic existence, or the training in the mind of enlightenment also depends on calm abiding. <laughs> so you have your quarter. <laughs> so in, in olden times, you know, we could give on reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in old, in yeah. When you know, in olden times, you know, people, uh, so elderly people are invited to schools, you know, to band schools to give some lectures on dharma, dharma teaching. Uh, yeah. So then you know, I was student, you know, <laughs> and then you know. <laughs> Because that's why, you know, presenting the, the teaching very skillfully in a very, you know, clear way is very important. So in the, there, you know, somebody, you know, you know, I mean, teaching keep on reading and then every the student, you know, doing like this in school. <laughs> so this happened there, yeah, like this. But then, yeah. Later on, now the presentation of you know become very nice, you know, very good, you know, like this. Participants, special for an understanding of view, realizing selfness to arise 
prior commanding is not necessary so now it says f uh, now f uh, now this is the manner in which come abiding precise special insights come abiding precise special for an understanding of the view realizing selfness to arise so it says if you to understand the emptiness you know to really understand the emptiness you know come abiding is not necessary it says it's not a priority factor prior factor just to understand you know if you were to develop the special insight come abiding come first come abiding first come first and then you cultivate the special insight the realization itself just to understand the uh, you know empty this you know emptiness come abiding yeah it's not the necessary factor to be cultivated first this is right pragma is not necessary because the view is also seen to arise in the absence of equal because without come abiding we can uh, meditate on emptiness you meditate on emptiness i meditate on emptiness right so then why come abiding necessary like this so like you can understand it without come abiding but can you realize emptiness without come abiding uh oh yeah understanding you know uh, so we can talk about three wisdom right uh wisdom gain uh, understanding of understanding of wisdom gain through hearing understanding of uh, understanding of wisdom gain through hearing the reflection of wisdom gain through reflection and then the you know uh, there is now the last one experiential the um, the experiential wisdom gain through meditation so in the so out of these three the first one come abiding is not necessary in the uh, come abiding and then in the second one second third one you know in order to develop the direct real, the kind of experiential of you know, wisdom come abiding go first right yeah this <clears throat> oh that yeah really makes sense you know that really makes just to understand the you know, impermanent just to understand the preciousness of human rebirth come abiding yes of course power come abiding very good very help you but don't not that necessary right necessary <coughs> and then if in order to develop the real experience in order to deeply heartfelt you know moving experience no come abiding is necessary come abiding in order to develop the perfect understanding perfect realization a deep conviction from the bottom of your heart about the you know preciousness the human rebirth the impermanent the emptiness now come about go first like this yeah um, for an experience of mental transformation concerning the view to arise come about is not necessary so therefore it's very important here is said for an experience of mental transformation if you if you want to you know transform your mind come abiding is not that come abiding is not a necessary factor to transform your mind to transform your mind you need to an, uh, analyze we need to analyze we need to experiment examine the object right so they say if if it has to make sense that even to transform your mind if we need to do you come abiding very difficult <laughs> and then you know in the society very difficult to produce <laughs> contributing member because we all have to achieve come abiding first <laughs> right like this nothing contradictory in the in experience mental transformation arising through familiarization with repeated analysis analysis by means of individual investigation if it were contradictory it would absolutely follow from the same reason that the experience of mental transformation arising from respect to impermanence the faults of cyclic existence or the training in the mind of enlightenment also depends on come abiding right so this say not depend on you know imp reflection on impermanent reflection on you know uh, training mind training impermanent emptiness does not necessarily you know you know uh, depend on come abiding mm. so we all can do meditation on impermanent you know impermanent very you know you see very precise zongaba make a very precise accurate through this you know understanding many of our doubt expelled dispelled 
Yeah. Otherwise, in early debate, you know, everything mixed <laughs> in one seat. Before Lama Adisha came to Tibet, any single person on one seat, just on one seat, cannot practice perfection of Wisdom Sutra and Vajrayana on the one seat. Lama Zongaba says, it is very possible that on one seat, one can practice without harmoniously, harmoniously, Sutra and Tantra harmoniously, he say. In early Tibetan, you know, those, you know, monk, you know, those pure Vinaya holders, they criticize Vajrayana teaching. Those practitioners of Vajrayana, they criticize. So they is like, you know, cold, hot and water, cold and hot, uneven, hot and cold. So then Lama Zongaba, Lama, this, um, Lama Adisha came, and then after that, Lama Zongaba came, he made things very clear, something that we're ready to eat. <laughs> So right now we understand all this because of Lama Tsongkhapa. We understand, you know, very precisely. Not, you know, yeah, uh, okay, sometimes, no, okay, not like this. <laughs> very precise, you know, he make, this is that, this is that. <laughs> so the, you see. Or that training of mind. The manner, no, the manner in which come abiding needs precise special insight. Dwell right. Dwell ten right. Ten to two. Ten to two. Oh. How many? We have. It's ten to two. Ten to two. We have fifteen minutes, right? Just ten. Do you want to do the meditation? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We are going to do, yeah. We twelve fifteen, right? We stop it, yeah, then yeah. Oh, and yeah, we do, yeah, maybe 15 minutes we do meditation, okay. <coughs> the, the reason why Lama Zongaba wrote all these things, you know, is I can, he, he can wrote directly, he can explain directly the practice. He can do that right from the beginning, no more, you know, explanation. He can do that. But then, you know, the practitioner, on the part of the practitioner, maybe may do some, you know, doing some meditation, and then some doubt come, you know, a lot of doubt. How now this coming, how to, to, to deal with this kind of problem? So he is making things very clearly, you know, like this, he's making things clearly, because there are, you know, different kinds of thinking. You know, different kinds of thoughts may you know come arise. So under such circumstances, how to deal with this you know problem? So he explaining the method how to do this. Right. The manner in which come abiding needs to proceed special insight. What then is the manner in which come abiding proceeds special insight? Uh, the manner. Here, so if you have some question, you can ask, then I will yeah, leave here. If you have no question, I will yeah, read a little bit. Yeah. I then I will question. step. Yeah. Earlier you talked about um, laxity and subtle laxity, mm. and it was hard to recognize subtle laxity, so yeah. how would you recognize that? Mm. So then I will stop here, I will explain. <laughs> Thank you. So normally, you know, um, meditation, right, in this, you know, there are, you know, two, you know, things, there are two things, uh, on the explanation side, and then all the, you know, um, explanation side, and then the, on the, ex say, experiential you know, side. Now, this, you know, when we engage in meditation, stabilization, you know, for example, although, you know, um, the experience, you know, what to identify, you know, the, the laxity, you know, for example, the laxity, you know, mental thinking, much depends on the practitioner, you know, what kind of feeling, you know, he, you know, 
gets so for example in the, the precise the precise things you know depends on the practitioner for example you know now you uh, meditate we meditate on you know some buddha image buddha image so i say you know uh, that's why i say now first we do this you know i here focusing on the tip of the nose while your mind is focusing while mind is focusing on the buddha image you know so this is actually the thought you know thought is a conceptual thought not the non conceptual thought it's a conceptual thought so <coughs> now when we do this kind of meditation especially uh, in the text recommended the dawn in the morning the best because the mind is so fresh mind is so fresh so then we you know then we do you know if there is uh, stability you know you are able to you are able to um, fix you are able to you are able to stay on the you know buddha image for you know uh, um, uh, for you know uh, um, for quite well you are when you are able to fix your mind on the buddha image quite well then there is a stability stability however the you know the image that not that clear you know you cannot get the full image full image you know what you are visualizing before if you are not able to get the full image not the clear image you know then it then that is uh there is uh, stability but there is no clarity so that is laxity the gross laxity then you know there is you know stability uh there is stability and then there is the clarity but the, the strength of clarity is not very strong you know strong then there is a danger of you know you know the danger of losing the danger of loosening the object you know clarity so like that is the you know the the um, that is the you know the subtle normally you know what kind of experience we get is only you know yeah only to the experience of the practitioner and yogis for example <clears throat> mm. uh, some they say the meditation you know that meditation when they try to explain meditation uh, beyond the elaboration beyond the elabor- elaboration so when it comes to the you know experiential the only the yogis and you know yogis and practitioner experience it for example uh buddha shakyamuni say when he when he first achieve enlightenment right when he first achieve the you know cessation moksha he say uh sabhidudu sadumachi sabada something that i have found is very profound sabji toba the deva free from all the elaboration it's a clear light and it's un- uh, it's a, you know not composite uncomposite it's like natural natural like so this kind of you know uh, the, the the phenomena that i have found you know i have found when i try to explain it to others nobody will understand this sabhi is it sabhi to is it the most used sabhi ko sulat hai if i try to explain nobody will experience it nobody will understand it so without you know telling them i will leave i will you know i will do my own meditation so that means you know the practitioner himself enjoy you know when it comes to you know experience level the person uh for example the emptiness you know the, the phenomena called emptiness which is beyond elaboration you cannot you know if you realize emptiness you know if you realize emptiness if you say what kind of feeling you get only to the experiences level he can only tell other people you know no cannot write down in description how bliss the person experience yeah so it because it is beyond verbal description like this 
only the person himself experiences it. He can when he try to ex express it, he cannot express it only at the level of the experiential. So like this. So now we have to we have, I think better do some kind of yeah come about your meditation. You bring the Buddha's image to the you know the center of your you know forehead you know uh, quite heavy, quite heavy, but not too heavy, up to the you know like this, and then the light emanating, light emanating from that Buddha's image. You know. Yeah, mm, right on the top.
Ja. Gut. Gute Experience. <lacht> So yeah, this uh